Hi, and welcome to 3dmotive.com. My name is Stephen G. Wells, and I'm a senior 3D artist. In this quick tips and tricks tutorial, we're going to take a look at the outliner and layers within Maya. Uh, there's some differences to each one of them, but either one of them are handy. They both basically kind of do the same thing. This is the Maya interface. comes up with our four different panels, our four different viewports, top, front, side, and perspective. If you want to change to a specific viewport, just bring you know maximize it. All you have to do is put your mouse over it or your cursor over it and just hit the space bar, and it'll automatically maximize that particular viewport. All right, with the uh, perspective viewport uh, selected, we're going to go ahead and click on our polygon sphere, and it says right there, drag on the grid. So we're just going to drag on the grid. Okay, there you go. That's our sphere. Now we have a couple different things over here in our tabs uh, panels. We have our attribute editor. Now this attribute editor allows us to actually adjust the division, the subdivision axis and the subdivision height on this particular model, which might come in handy. So we do say down to 10, do this one down to 10 as well. And there you go. To rotate around the model, by the way, is left alt. Pan is right, uh, middle mouse alt, and zooming in and out is right alt. We can actually zoom in and out of the object. Always a very cool function. Okay, now with uh, Maya, you have a couple different ways to be viewing uh, multiple objects in your viewport. One of them is layers, and one of them is the outliner. To find the outliner, you just have to click on Window and select this right here. This is the outliner. Okay. This shows you what's in your scene. Now these are the actual the cameras actually set up in each particular viewport. There's there's kind of like invisible cameras that are set up for each one of the viewport, but they do exist in the scene. Therefore, they show them. There's also some de default lights and sets. Okay, those you don't have to worry about. What you have to worry about is the object itself, the P sphere. This is our particular uh, polygon sphere, P sphere polygon. If you just double click it, you can change the name. We can just call it Orb and hit Enter, and that changes it. All right, so we have our Orb, okay? Now we can do a lot of different things with, with the Orb, obviously, you know, we can, right now it's on scale. If I go ahead and I can rotate right now, I switch it out and do rotate. Of course, I can always just move it around on, on our scene. The nice thing with this outliner is it, you can keep organized with a bunch of different objects that you have. It'll actually list everything as you do it. If we do a quick control D, which is duplicate, I'll move this sphere over a little bit so we can see it. Let's go ahead and scale it down just a bit as well so we can see a difference between the two. So we have orb and orb one. Now if I had actually named this orb one, it probably would have it would have named this orb two, but that's okay. We can just leave it for, uh, for now as is. Now there's a couple different things we can do with uh, these. We can select the objects by just clicking on them in the viewport. As you can see, they do select in our outliner as well. Okay. Right now, by the way, if I, I'm not selecting anything, uh, you don't even see the wireframe on the model. And that's, that's fine. You don't have to have that there. But oftentimes, I'll go to shading and I'll have wireframe on shaded. That way you can always see your wireframe even if you don't have the model selected. Now again, I can either select it via the, the outliner or select it via the viewport. One of the nice things is like, let's say I wanted to hide this particular object, I can just hit Control H. Now it looks like I've deleted it on the scene, but as you can see, it's still here on our, on our outliner uh, list. It's just it's grayed out. It's because it's basically been hidden. To unhide that, all I have to do is hit select the orb again and hit Shift H. That unhides it. Okay. Let's go ahead and hide that again. You can also always go to uh, one of the one of the quick little things up uh, up here is you can always go for uh, Show All. It was up under Display. <clears throat> show All. Okay. That'll bring you the model back. There are times I've actually done where I have multiple objects and sometimes just selecting on the, the outliner doesn't bring the object back. I don't know why. That's a, it's an occasional little bug, I guess. But you can always go to display, show, oops, and show all, and it'll bring it right back, no problem. But at least so far for this, it's working just fine, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. Oh, and by the way, 
and just so you can see this, that is the actual camera. Now remember, the cameras that are in each viewport are hidden, but when you do show all, it actually unhides all of them. So we can actually grab these and do a Control H, and that hides them again. When when you go to display show all, it shows everything in the scene, even the hidden stuff that are that's hidden by default. All right. Anyway, so again, so we can select our objects via the viewport or via via our um, outliner. You can also grab both items and do a Control G, and that groups them. Let's say we can double click that and call it spheres. If you want to see what, what's under this particular group, you can just hit this little arrow key, and this shows you we have orb 1 and orb 2. When you're grouping items, and again, you have multiple objects in it, sometimes it's, it's really good to start grouping things. It's very easy to take one of these objects out of this particular group. You just have to middle, middle mouse click it, and you just drag it out into the gray. Now it's not in this particular group. The spheres is only this item. Nice thing is, is if you want the orb, the original orb, into that group, again, you just middle click, drag, and you drop it on the name. You see how it kind of highlights that? You get the full the full uh, box around it. If I let it go, boom, there you go. All right. Now, there is a difference between that and layers in uh, Maya. It, it's just it's organizational, uh, really. Um, it just depends on how you like to do it. I, I like to use the outliner a lot, but I know there are people that like to use layers. To, to create a layer, you can just make sure you're selected on your channel layer editor. So you have the channel box, which is this, and you have the layer editor, which is this. You can merely click the layers button. Now you can create an empty layer, or we can create a layer from what is selected in the scene. And right now, obviously, it's the original orb, the sphere. Let's go ahead and do both. We'll go ahead and just create from the selected. So there you go. Doesn't look like anything's changed. I mean, you know, nothing. nothing's done. On. I can now double click this and we can call this uh, orb original. Hit enter. Save. Oh, well, that was unusual. All right. 201. I've done that before, but evidently not now. Okay, so we have orb one, and we still have this, and that's not in anything. Let's go ahead and go for, I'm gonna just deselect. In fact, I can still select it. Let's go to layers and create an empty layer, all right? So now we have one layer and one empty layer. If I select the one layer, I can actually hit this V, and now I've just basically hidden my object, okay? And again, you can do the same in the outliner. You can do easily do the same. Now, you can see from here, though, it's not hidden in the outliner. That's because we, we have it visible and invisible. Uh, vis we have it hidden on the layer, so we've made it visible or invisible. Technically, it's still there. It's still just no longer showing. But it's not technically hidden like it is with the outliner. To bring it back, all I have to hit, do is click the first box, which is the V, and that brings it back. That makes it visible. What I can now do with this layer one, again, we didn't put anything in this empty uh, this this empty layer. What we can now do is I'm going to double click it. I'm just going to call this orb. We'll call it zero two. Hit save. Now in this case, it is empty. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this item. I'm now going to right click on the orb layer, and I'm going to grab this one right here that says add selected objects. All right. So now we have two different objects on two different layers, and I can hide both of them, or I can bring one back, bring the other one back, hide the smaller one. One of the nice things is, too, sometimes when you're working, if you have a high-resolution model and you're going to make a low-res version of it, um, you can actually, on this particular version, what you can do, we'll go to the Orb 1, if this empty box here is, this is the default. It's like you're not doing anything with it. But if I click the T, that's template. If I hit R, that's reference. But the point is, is once it's either R for reference or T for template, it can't be selected in scene. Okay, I can select the small orb, no problem. But as long as this is a template, 
you know, again, for me to build something with, or a reference, then it means it's there for you to, to work it so you can reshape things or build a model around it or whatever without you having to try and do anything funny with it. Just makes it kind of easy for you to be able to build models, etc., by, by merely making it a reference or a template. Obviously, reference is a little bit easier because you can actually then see the model. Or you can just put it back to its default normal state, which means you can then select it as you need to. So again, that's just the very quick introduction into Outliner versus Sphere in Maya. My name is Stephen G. Wells, and this has been 3dmotive.com. Thanks for watching.